guys, welcome back to another episode of I Am I. Number 155, coming up on three years, pretty amazing. Um, so, today we are going to go back once again into the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, right? We've been taking this journey. We went through all the kleshas and we went through the yamas and now we're into the second limb of Ashtanga Yoga in the niyamas, right? Which are the observances that we want to have for ourselves, the things that we do want to do. So we started, we had the Saucha, the Saucha, we do the yoga on the Facebook. So we had Saucha, which is cleanliness and purity, right? And we had a practice of Santosha, contentment, working into that space. And then we had um, Saucha, Santosha, Tapas, austerity, right? And heat and building that self-discipline. And then we had, last week we had Svadhyaya, which was self-study, right? Which is all these things coming together and that's just the niyamas. That's not even the yamas and that's not even awareness of the kleshas and the obstacles. Come on through, come on through. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's all good, thank you. So, we're, that's the, not even the kleshas and the obstacles. And again, this is just one modality of understanding that we're working into, right? Of, of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali because we need some sort of system, otherwise we are not aware of what's happening. So, as we work into this modality, we're working now into this last one of the Niyamas. There's, there's also in different understandings, in different uh, modalities, even in the Hindu tradition, there's 10 Niyamas instead of five Niyamas, right? So this one where there's five Niyamas and the last one is Ishwara Pranidhana, right? Which is a fancy way of saying surrender. Now, surrender has a very negative connotation to it you know, in this world, in this material world. Generally speaking, it's surrender means that you've lost, right? So you're, you're surrendering. But this is a different kind of surrender, right? This is a surrender to win. This is an understand that we stop fighting everyone and everything and the understanding that the surrender that is happening within us because of the fight that we have, which is actually the mind that works in this duality that wants to have it the way it wants it to be. It wants other pe people to behave the way they want it to behave. We want the world to be exactly as we want it to be in order for us to be okay, right? So this is a crucial part of it. Now, a lot of times it's translated um, secularly, you know, so people who use this modality in a theistic way translated as, as surrender to God, right? Ishwara is really an understanding of this, this deity, of the, um, uh, of the worldly aspects, right? Uh, of the imminent aspects of, of this ultimate reality or God or something like that. What, you know, these are, these are concepts we've talked about before, so it's a lot to work with. It's, but basically, it's understanding that it's, uh, it, when it's translated as surrender to God, because it's not just let go, it's let go and let God, right, is the idea. So I will say that there is no explicit explanation of God or if you need to surrender to God in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. It's not like the Bhagavad Gita where there's clearly a character of Krishna who is this deity and is saying, you know, surrender unto me, right? And there's a whole other ways we can interpret that too from a Jnani perspective and intellectual understanding, right? Of what that me is and what that person is saying. But basically there's no explicit understanding in the Yoga Sutras that there is some God, right? It talks about Purusha, which is can be translated as the special self, right? So it can be the higher self or the absolute reality or the Atman or the Brahman, which, you know, depending on how you look at it, could be the same thing, right? Depending on which Vedanta you're speaking from, if you're talking Advaita Vedanta. So there's all different, all different understandings of it. That's why this is a journey for you to understand. It's not really seeking the answer. It's about living in the question and about being able to be in the question, right? And find that stability in the chaos. Like that's the whole idea, is finding the divine core of who we are, right? So really that's how it works for me, is understanding that as it's a surrender, it doesn't fucking matter if I surrender to Jesus or Krishna. Really at, at that point, whether or not those are actual beings or people or whatever, they might be the same fucking being for all I know, right? Jesus might be a reincarnation of Krishna or Lord Maitreya or whatever fucking incarnations these, beings may or may not have had. I don't, it doesn't fucking matter. The point is let go. Let go and stop fighting. It is surrendering. So it is the surrender. People will be like, it's not enough to let go. You have to let go and let God. Okay, fine. Then whatever the heck God means to you, right? But it's not just about, it, it is just about not, not stepping into that fight all the time because it's the internal fight that we have 
we are talking about understanding ourselves on deeper levels to understand how to have happiness and joy and freedom on deeper levels, right? And that's what this is about. That's what ultimately the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, whether you use it in a modern perspective or an actually monastic perspective, it's about getting to a space of samadhi, of, of bliss and connection into this consciousness, whatever that is, right? So it is about just surrender, just a surrender to win. So it's not this old perspective that we have of surrendering being bad. That is a very black and white way of understanding it. It's in a bigger picture. It's like, yes, the general wants to win the battle. He wants to fight the battle. And of course you want to win, right? But when do you actually have to surrender in order to win in the bigger picture? And where are you driving yourself crazy? Where is this frustration and agitation coming from with you because you want it to be a certain way, right? I mean, I, I just noticed like, I don't know if I should get into this because it's going to show what an asshole I am and trying to teach. You guys can come on through if you want. It's fine. So it may show what I, an asshole I may be, but actuality. Um, we're going to pause for a second. No, it's all right. Come on in. I'm like standing in the middle of the walkway. You can't even that out. Yeah, it's all right. Maybe I'll keep it in. We'll see how it goes. So talking about surrender, right? Coming back into it. I, the, the, it's the human nature. Again, we're studying the nature of the human mechanism in the human mind, right? When we're talking about these, these philosophies, because it's surrendering into something higher, right? So yesterday I was driving, right? And I was doing under the speed limit. I was unaware that I was doing under the speed limit, but, but recognizing it's a speed limit, not a speed target. So I was doing a healthy, you know, still doing a healthy pace, right? And the person behind me flipped out. They were flipping out. And I was like, they, they're angry at me and they're blaming me. And I understand I take full responsibility. Woo. I take full responsibility for that aspect. But the difference that I'm noticing is how fucking fit, flipped out he got at me doing 10 miles an hour because I was doing about 40 in a 50, right? Now, I don't know. Maybe he was on his way to the hospital because his, his wife was dying. I don't know. And maybe it's like justified or not, right? But what we're talking about is how agitated we get because people aren't behaving the way we want them to behave. When the world isn't exactly as we want it to be and we blame them for our agitation with them, right? And now let's not be black and white about this because I'm not talking about enduring abuse or staying in a space of abuse or tolerating stuff that we don't have to tolerate. It's not about that. It's about moving out of the fight within us to a space of ease and peace and then we take action in the world from there. So it is not submission and surrendering and giving up. It is moving into a space of fighting without fighting, as Bruce Lee calls it, or as the Bhagavad Gita calls it, actionless action, which I talk about a lot. It's moving into the space of ease within us, surrendering into something higher. So it's Ishwara Pradhidana is surrender to something higher. So it's not just surrender, right? It is, it's not surrendering to your lower base desires. It's not surrendering and well, you mind worshiping Satan. I don't know if that's your thing. You want to worship Satan, fine, but that's a lower base thing, right? But if you want to surrender into something higher, maybe just a higher aspect of yourself, or like I say, Jesus, Krishna, whatever it is, those are just beings that represent these understandings and these higher ideals that we can live by if we surrender and stop running, the, running by the mind when you start to become a master of your mind instead of having the mind master you, right? And it's going where after, wherever. Come on through, man. Nobody listens to this shit anyway, so. I'm li we're listening. Oh. Actually, my, name, my name means surrender. Oh, really? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a the hugging, hugging saint gave me, gave me that name. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt. No, it's okay. Hey, people are talking good stuff here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's, I, your, what's your name? Well, my... Hindu yeah. name is Samarpana. She's on tour right now, right? Well, she's just done. She's done. She's in India. Or she's in Japan or India now? Yeah. yeah she's in Japan. Um, she finished the North American tour. She's there for a month? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've always going through these. On the West Coast, Seattle, so she's San Ramon, and uh, uh, LA. Did you ever see her? Mexico. I never have, no. Oh. Oh, you gotta go. God, you've got to see her. The most powerful, purest energy in the world. Pure love energy. You've got to see her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know of her, but I've never seen her, no. I mean... Well, this is when she was 20 years old. Okay. Now she's... How old was she? 64? Mm, 1953, so... Okay. Um, 
you want to give us your email and we can let you know. I mean, I don't know if you're yeah, going to be sure. traveling to other countries or at what, but. And I mean, we I do a lot, yeah. Yeah, well, I try she, to. I mean, she comes here. I think at the end of May or the beginning of June, then she leaves sometime in July in, in the United States. But she travels in other places of the world, and then in India, she does a tour, and then she's in the ashram, like less than half a year. Um, but if you want to see her a lot, like. The, the her ashram is the place to go and mm -hmm. you know day after day after day um and it's just i mean yeah i mean do, but you might want to just you know introduce yourself to her like a little bit at a time you know to see if you vibe you know but it's yeah it's i know I, I, I've, I've been to i know all, yeah i get i get how to find my own flow with it you know it's, it's amazing um i mean it's the energy of god i mean it's like that you'll never feel another energy like this it's amazing that's beautiful that's beautiful so well, what was the name she gave you? Samarpana. Samarpana. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, one who has surrendered to God with equilibrium. Um, and I'm always going, my, my life is so much, I have a 10 out of 10 difficult life of difficulty. And I'm always going through like really, really impossibly difficult, like they're impossible, multiple things all at once. They're impossible. And it, it's just been so difficult. I and mean, you won't even believe what I'm going through now, what the body's going through. And, um, yeah. And it's just so. So yeah, I mean, it's like always, it's pushing me more and more to surrender, like, past the body, like, who I, who, I, who am I past the body? Is that what you were talking about, surrender? She hates yeah. Mm -hmm. Who am I past Yeah, Ishwara Pranidhan is part of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. That's what, that's what her name is. Yeah. yeah, that's what she was saying. Yeah, that's really funny, because that's what I'm teaching this week, because I, that's what I, yeah, I, that's what I'm hearing. I, yeah, so I teach, I do a vlog, but I'm a yoga teacher as well, and yeah. stuff like that, and like, so... Uh, and, and teaching in all, just a spiritual teacher. So it's always about surrender, and that's what that's what I'm teaching about this week yeah. we specifically. Do, so that's awesome. We have a, a PM, a I've never I've never actually been to transcendental meditation, but I mean I go to a bunch. Of, I've, I'm always exploring. I'm you know a seeker and always always exploring different masters and different techniques and things like that. So. That's fine. Do, do you have a um, Do you want to give us your email? Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, it's ama.org, by the way, A-M-M-A dot org, and you can check her schedule out there. Here, my, my email's on there. Oh, we can have this? Yeah. Okay, my name is Dawn, well, Dawn might come up in the email, or peace, love, and his name is Amadat, or Anatol. Amadat is a spiritual name, one who has surrendered, the so what, one, Lord of Immortality, that's what his name means. Nice. Um, oh, you can, okay, you can keep it, okay. Awesome. Well, yeah, so. Well, thank you. It was really wonderful to meet you guys. You I too. love that. I'll probably see you on the way back if you're still here. Yeah, I'll be finishing up soon. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, e yeah, email me or if you check out the website, I have a blog called I Am I. So it teach you know, just talking about these principles, you might enjoy it. You know, you might not. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing. Are you on Facebook? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, yeah. Can I add one thing to what I'm yeah. saying? Sure. To the surrender thing? Sure. Because I'm being pushed to deny it. Is literally, it is um, to surrender. Like, I'm being pushed to go because of what's happening to my body. It's like growing and growing and it's growing outward. And the torso is growing and shrinking my legs. And like, everything's growing out and my face is becoming, everything is becoming more masculinized. Uh -huh. and, and, and growing and growing. Like, the HGH hormone is out of control. and it's, it's horrible, especially with being a female and wanting to be the complete opposite. Um, so I'm being pushed to see what I am beyond the body. And so this is my practice. I'm having to like kind of bring my mind back into not thinking, um, into stillness as much as possible. And I, that's, that's the practice, to keep bringing my mind back into stillness as much as possible. And I, but I keep getting caught up because the body keeps growing and growing. I keep getting caught up with how how difficult it is and how horrific it is and how much I hate looking like this and um, being like, it feels terrible. I mean, it's absolutely a nightmare. And, and among many other things that are happening at the same time in different ways, at different levels of my life. And, um, and, so, and so I have to keep going back to stilling the mind. And that's, that's really the refuge in it and to see what I am beyond the body and the mind and to give up any dream, I mean, all dreams, all dreams that I've had were based on this body, you know, based on my wanting to be in a female body, and, and 
I think it'll turn around eventually. I think Amal will turn it around. I think my fate will turn, turn it around. But it's just ha I'm having to go through this and mm -hmm. surrender to God first before it, you know, the surrender to the silence, which is also called the silence, to God first before it actually does. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when things are kind of going well, then you kind of make plans and want to do things. You know, mm -hmm. you have desires and want to do things. But when all that has um, come to a standstill, you, you forced to search for something deeper, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you, you have, and, and doing that, you get, going into the stillness is like the answer, because it's all there, and and that's what I'm working on. And and then, once you surrender into that stillness, then maybe, kind of what's been coming to me this morning is that maybe, you see that you're, your desires are nothing compared to that stillness, I guess. And it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't been there. I'm still working on it. So. Yeah, it's okay to not know that, too. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, but I, I believe the stillness and stilling the mind is a huge part of it. And also, I'm, I'm doing Amma's mantra, too. Um, that gave me, uh, you can do both at the same time. Um, so yeah, when you start to make plans and things are going relatively, there's something, at least something in your life that's going relatively well, that's not necessarily coming from God, so to speak. I mean, it could be, but it's could really be, yeah. deep. I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is deep enough to have, I feel like my desire is deep enough to have, want to have a feminine body and stuff, but, and then, and then if your mind makes plans, starts making plans and doing things, then you're not necessarily searching for God. You're, 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 you're kind of just keeping the momentum of the desires and mind going. And fear, fear, fears and desires like go together. And if you care, supposedly if you don't have fear, you don't necessarily have desires. Unless they're, um, unless they're like coming from a deep place of stillness or God. And um, that's what, you know, Vyasa said, our friend Vyasa who's awakened, he said, <laughs> he said if you don't have fears, you don't have desires. And so that's what keeps the reincarnation happening. To keep us going into body after body, the fears and the desires. So I'm still working on that. Yeah, but and that's, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's okay to have those desires. Like I think in my process, it was like, okay, so that means desires are a bad thing. They're the demon or the devil, or you know, the Buddhist idea, or something that mm -hmm. that I can't have desires. And that's not necessarily, in my case, right. true. Right. Because I still have desires. Even the desire for yeah. God is a, is a yeah, desire, yeah, yeah. but it's a deeper connection. Until you ultimately realize that you are already in that space, which is a hard thing. Yeah. 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 But that self-realization or the God realization. Yeah. Like once you're in that space, then then there's no, then there's a stillness, and there's no desire. But then we could still take action in the world. So I still want, find myself taking the same action, but from a place of my desires are now changed, mm -hmm. and if they're deeper, or if I come into that fulfillment of the desire of God realization then I'm moving in this in this world in a space of service or, yeah. you know in some way that is not just to recognize that I'm that I am I am fulfilled yeah uh, well I'd prefer that complete, but know? I'm being pushed for something else mm -hmm. yeah I prefer that for sure I would choose that any day but uh, yeah I'm being pushed for something else and for what do you mean you're being pushed for well because else? all my all my my desires are based on having a feminine body, having it like what I want as a body, and and the faith, you know, everything, my design, and so now that that's being destroyed, now that that's being destroyed, I have to go deeper, mm -hmm. and seeing like, I have to go deeper and see what happens. So yeah, but I would prefer that any day. What do you mean prefer that? Prefer what? Prefer what you said any day. Which I would, is what? I would, which is to keep my, you know, to, to keep my desire and habit fulfilled. You know, have the desires that I want fulfilled, and and do what, and, well, go, I, I, and I, just continue right. on through life. Well, what, I'm not saying my desires fulfilled. I'm saying my desire for God fulfilled, mm -hmm. and to actually recognize that it already is. It's only my lack of awareness that it already is. So that, yeah. So that, so that it, it's not about, it's not about my desires. What's driving me forward now in the world, in in life? Of course, is my desires. I'm just a, you know, just a dude, but the same the, the drive that i had to be like create my art or put something out there to be of service was even a selfish reason you know glorification of myself in some way mm -hmm. but now i take the same action from the gifts that i've been given by god but in a different perspective mm -hmm. because i've come to, into a, a deeper and deeper every day into a connection into that space mm -hmm. yeah so I, that, I get yeah right right so that you. so that i'm not saying about just getting all my desires 
fulfilled. As I recognize my desire for God realization fulfilled, the desires fall off anyway. Which, yeah. which is exactly what I feel like you're saying, because you have a desire to do something in this world through this feminine body, and that's being thwarted now. Yeah. Or so you so so yeah. you see it that way. I don't know. I mean, it seems yeah. like oh, you're, yeah. sure. you seem like a beautiful woman. I don't know what you mean about looking this way. So that may be a perspective thing too. I don't. No, I don't it's know. not. It's actually happening. Um, oh no, I mean, I'm sure that that's, that's happening. But I'm just saying the way you feel about it right now is like I, I can tell you. I mean, that, that you're you, you don't look like a man. That's what I, you know what I mean? I'm just telling you from my perspective. Well, it's... But that's, that's, I, I understand that I'm not, not diminishing your experience <laughs> of it. Not to diminish your experience yeah. of it. Just telling you from my perspective. Are you awake? I mean, are you, know you're awakened? Do I know I'm yeah. awakened? Yeah, I mean, do you know that you're awake? Do you, did you have that shift of consciousness? I had, a, I mean, I've had huge shifts in consciousness, but I don't know. It depends on what you mean by awake. If you think, I, I think I'm... Co growing in consciousness every day. I don't consider myself an enlightened being, if uh, that's what you, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If that's what okay. you, yeah, you yeah. know, and I never, <laughs> I don't ever plan to consider myself an enlightened being. Mm. So, surrender. I don't know where I was at before. Um, just fucking let go. Just let go. And surrender into your own fucking greatness. I have to go work through this now. <laughs> I have to surrender into something else. I have to see what that interaction was within me that happened. I'm gonna watch it back. All right. In the Kesha Lakin, I am you. You are me. Namaste. What? Too much?